Let me see, fix it. Here we have a uh, throttle body issue, uh, I believe, um, right inside here. Uh, we have a really rough idle. Um, I'll probably also claim the idle air um, controller on top as well. Um, pretty much the problem is, is just not riding well when you're like at a stop. Um, sometimes it goes up and down with the tachometer. Um, it just sounds really rough. Um, but this should help solve this problem and uh, you'll be back on the road running regular again. This is a 2002 uh, Dodge Caravan slash Town and Country by Chrysler. Um, should work for all that fourth generation. So I think it's about 2001 to about 2010. Um, this should be a very similar fix for all of those. Here are the tools that you're gonna need for this project. Um, you're gonna want mass airflow. Uh, with sensor cleaner, this will allow you to get everything clean really well. You can also use a couple of different other products uh, like throttle body cleaner. Uh, some people even use brake cleaner. I prefer that because if you do get it on the sensor, you're good. You're going to want lots of paper towels, something to catch all the, the debris and dirt in because there will be some carbon buildup. Uh, Q-tips are really good. You can get those really cheap at the dollar store. Um, T20, um, Torx bit, flathead, 5 16 and a 10 millimeter, you will want an extension on that as well. And so that's all the tools that you need to make this happen. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and take a 5 16 and you are going to disconnect um, the air intake and the hose that connects these two between that and the throttle body. And these ones are kind of weird. You do have to kind of push them kind of at the same time. And I did forget to disconnect this first. So back up in here is a switch. You can see the top of it red right there. So with these red clips, the best thing to do is just use a screwdriver to kind of push them back and then on that, and right there you go, that's disconnected now. You can also, there's a hose back here. You can disconnect this hose right here and this will give you a little bit more room. There's a little tab right there and you can just set that to the side. You don't have to take it the bottom part off as well. And then this thing just kind of slides off there. And there is a sensor in there. So just set it off to the side for now. So you guys can see the carbon buildup on this. This other side will look much, much worse. And so um, as you push down the throttle, this opens up. You can see how dark it is in there. Um, there is no light as well, so that it will look dark naturally. But you can just see. Um, and so this is what we're going to be taking off. Um, the next thing I would do is take this off right here, and these things do come out. You kind of got to pull this up, and then kind of loop it up and over, and they do come out. They go back in the same order. You just kind of set those to the side there. It is a 10 millimeter on that. You should have three of those. You can take this plastic piece off if you want to have even more room. Um, that air intake does come off pretty easily, uh, but you don't have to. It's not really a necessity. I'm just getting these kind of broken loose so then I'm gonna pull off the rest of the connector wires in just a second. Just wanna make sure I get them all started. So you have one here, and then your next one, which is kind of hard to see. So you have one here, your next one is right here, and the other one the camera cannot get to, but it's back over here. They just packed these engines so full today and even fuller with some of the newer vehicles. Okay, 
now that I got all of those broke loose, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect all of these. And most of the time these have these beautiful little red plastic pieces. <clears throat> that one came off really easy. That one did not have one. I don't know if it's supposed to or not. Most of everything on these Dodges is supposed to. That next one's being a booger, which doesn't shock me. I might have to <clears throat> go ahead and get it all the way off first. I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on getting it off. It's not gonna hurt it. So these are quite long, I'm gonna pull them out. Um, but you do have to remember most of it is in this part and it just comes through just a little bit. Do not lose those. Like always, put them in a safe place. And you can see the housing is starting to come away, which is exactly what we want as we're unscrewing these. And that third one is kind of tucked up underneath, but you can feel it. Um, and that does help you be able to know exactly where it's at. Let's see if I can finish it by hand. And I can't. <laughs> This thing doesn't really have anywhere to fall, so you don't have a whole lot of worry. Um, but it does help. I'm gonna support it with my hand just to make sure. And you do not wanna lose that bolt. Which would be the easiest one to lose out of all of them. Almost there. Not sure if you can see what I'm doing, but a little trick is uh, when you got it pretty close to coming off. There it is. You can actually take and spin with your hand and it does help a lot. So this thing should be pretty free and you should have another cable to get off and an air hose to get off. Okay, so you know how I mentioned that this side was pretty dirty, wait till you see the back side really nasty and caked on. So we're gonna spend some time cleaning this up. I will also clean up this. We'll take it off with uh, the idle air control with two T20 little bolt. Oh, there's only one. I thought there were two. Um, there's only one T20 right here. And uh, we'll get that off too and get that cleaned up. So for this project, I am going to use mass airflow and it has sensor cleaner, which means it's safe for sensors. Um, you can use throttle body. You probably can even get away with brake cleaner, uh, but I like the mass airflow because if I accidentally get it in on a sensor, which there are a couple here, it is not going to ruin it. So the first thing I like to do, shake it up just a little bit and spray and just let that sit a moment. Um, you can even let it sit a minute or two if you'd like. And then you have a bag of Q-tips or at least a good handful and uh, you can just start scraping that away. It's amazing how quick it gets clean. Um, the back side will take a little bit longer than this, but uh, yeah, that Q-tip is gross. So all this carbon buildup is not really good for your engine um, as it's trying to get through 
And I always lay a couple of blue towels down um, just so it can help soak it up. Um, you can use regular towels, but uh, I really do like these blue shop towels. They just seem to hold up a little bit better, especially with uh, COVID-19 and everyone taking all the regular paper towels. They're kind of hard to come by paper towels, which is the craziest thing in the world. So go ahead and spray this side. You can also spray on the top. And you can see this stuff just kind of like starts eating through. And just kind of go back and forth, let it sit, puddle up, and just continue to break down that carbon, which is exactly what we want it to do. And this should help give you a little bit better, better idle. Um, because I've done this before in a couple of other vehicles and it has just really helped. So as you're cleaning that out, it starts to look a whole lot better. On this side, the side closest to the engine, um, I normally do it at least twice. Um, and I'll kind of explain why. Because if you don't, um, typically you're still leaving some good residue on the sides and stuff. It's just hard to get in the first pass. So you do it once and then you do it twice. You can do it three or four times if you need to. This spray is pretty inexpensive because you don't use a whole lot of it. I think it ranges about three to five dollars, maybe six bucks if you're out in the middle of nowhere and they charge you more for things, which has happened to me before. Yeah, see, I'm gonna have to clean this one a little bit more because right here, right where it connects, so this is where, when you stepped on the pedal, this is what happens. And I'm gonna show you a trick to get inside of there too. But right now we're just kind of still focusing in on just the generic inside part. but it looks a whole lot better already than when we first started. And then there also is this little for the air hose. I clean this out as well. Um, I think it's really important that that is clean because look how gross and dirty that one was. Q-tips are pretty inexpensive as well, so don't feel bad if you're using a bunch. Go buy some more of the Dollar Tree. They sell a whole entire thing of them for $1. Um, that's where I normally get mine for a lot of the videos and stuff that I do, a lot of the repairs, cleanups. Because you, you don't have to be the best ones. They're not going inside your ears. They're just cleaning up. And these ones work pretty well. Here's the trick I want to show you as well. So you can turn this with your hands. And then I always, so I don't smash it down on my hands. I just put a screwdriver in it. You don't want to do this long term, but it does allow you to get, you can see the carbon build up there. which is obviously probably the harder spot to get all the carbon out of. But uh, the main thing is that you are really trying to get as much as you can. So you don't have to do this again, hopefully ever. But you can also spray some on a shop towel and stick it down in there. Sometimes that helps to just get it a little cleaner. Yeah, look how gross. And kind of the same thing for the other side. So that part is done. Looks a whole lot better. There's still a little on this I need to get off, but um, starting to look just so much better. Um, and there is a lot of carbon buildup that happens inside your idle air controller. So again, you're gonna need a T20. Um, a lot of the newer screws today are T20. They also make uh, screwdriver sets, which are super helpful. And you just put that in. You can tell that's the first time that's ever come out of there since they installed it. 
because it was not friendly to get out. So go slow, don't break the head off, because it can happen, even with the T Torx bit sets. And just work that screw right out. Again, save that screw with your three other bolts. And sometimes this is a little bit of a pain to get off. You can't take a flat head to gently pry it up. There it popped. So you can see the carbon buildup on that is pretty bad. I have seen worse before, but uh, since you got it, you might as well clean out the inside, which we're going to do in a second, and clean this out. So because you can use this on sensors and pretty much a whole lot more, we're gonna to continue to use the mass. Um, Airflow cleaner. Give it a good chunk. Spray some on the inside. I'll let that sit for a second while I get a couple of Q-tips. Same concept. So what this thing is doing is it compresses and expands inside of there and it kind of gives you a bypass of air, which is really important when you're trying to start your car and when you're in idle that you're stereo, still getting airflow into your vehicle. So I'll show you exactly what that looks like in one second. <coughs> so now that that's pretty clean, we're gonna jump on over and hit up the inside. And so what this is doing is it is allowing air to get in and through. This is the side where your air intake is and this little cutout allows it to come in and out and opens and closes so you have the ability to get in there. So we're just gonna continue to clean. Yeah, pretty gross. And then we'll use some shop towels to do kind of the final wipe down and we're ready to reinstall. I also suggest if you have the opportunity to clean up anything else around it, on it, um, go ahead and do that. That's really important. Uh, just saves you some time the next time you're cleaning stuff. Yeah, that's, there's still residue left over. So yeah, just kind of clean everything. Use new parts of the shop towel as you go around. Replace it with this part. So you're gonna go ahead and take it, put your sensor kind of back in there. Um, you don't wanna press on this end piece, but you do have to give it some nice bit of force to start getting it in there, which is hard to record and do at the same time. So try my best, I'm gonna have to. So once I was able to kind of put it up next to my body and really kind of push it in, there will be just a touch of a gap that was already there before. So this first part does not have threads, it's the second part that does. So you wanna make sure you're super aligned before you start cranking down on it and start twisting it in there because you do not wanna break this off. It should go in there pretty smoothly. It will also help tighten up if there is any extra gap. If there's a big gap, it will not tighten that down. And just go till it's snug and then one little 18th inch of a turn after that. On a folded shop towel, go ahead and spray a little bit more of that cleaner. And you're going to want to kind of hit this whole area here to make sure this is nice and clean all the way around because this is what it's got a seat onto. Um, you want that to be exactly what it needs to be because that was pretty dirty. Um, and you can also clean a little bit on the inside if you really want to be advantageous. So go ahead and take your throttle body. Remember it goes this direction, it does not go that direction. This is what seats on that right there. And so you can go ahead and plug in. The top one is a two pin, the bottom one is a three pin. So as you're looking, make sure you get the right one, which I'm gonna start actually with this air hose.
so the air hose is in and we're looking for the three prong you want to hear it snap in like that and this one did lose its little red clip at some point i thought i was right on that um those little red clips do like to break a lot uh, they do help keep it in and secure um, but you're not having a whole lot of craziness happening here so you do not want to just sit and just twist this one down and in you're going to want to go ahead and put it in lightly by hand so that way you can line up all three so once that one's in honestly the easy, that second easiest one is the one on this side because you can kind of know and see where it's at Not the easiest thing to do by hand because uh, there's a lot of stuff around it, but you normally can at least get it kind of started by hand if you need to. You can kind of do the same thing as we were getting it off and just start it by hand. Again, this is just to help get it where it needs to go and make sure you are not going to strip either three of these bolts, which is what you do not want to do because that becomes a really expensive fix-it project and you do not want to fix that. Just saying, done it before many times. Stripping bolts and breaking off bolts is not the way you want to do this. That last one, uh, kind of towards the back of the engine is obviously going to be the hardest one of the three because you really can't see it. If I wasn't filming, it might be a little bit easier because I could stick my head over there um, where the camera is at. So all three are in. You can go ahead and attach your ratchet. I did read somewhere that this is uh, 65 inch pounds. Um, I'm not probably going to torque it down. I'm just going to do it hand tight. Somebody will probably comment and say I'm a dumb dumb. That's okay. I don't always torque everything down. If it's something to do with like wheels and stuff like that, yeah. Suspension. But this is going pretty much onto plastic. And 65 inch pounds of torque is not a whole lot, but... I'm doing things like spark plugs and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm going to use a torque, torque wrench. But this, not so much. And I couldn't find the exact specifications too. So that 65 might be right or might be wrong. Do not do foot pounds of torque at 65. You will for sure break it. It is the inches, not the foot. So one little tap after it's tight. You'll also want to make sure as you're doing this that it's seated correctly up here. If you still see that orangish red gasket, uh, you're not doing this right. Back it about all of them back out and redo it because uh, you're probably not in on one or multiple of them. That thing ain't going nowhere. So the next thing you're going to do is get your throttle cables on and so you're going to want to make sure it's all the way in the back position you're going to take the further of the two and begin to slide it in and through and in it to that groove right there same thing with this one and that's it that's back on where it's supposed to be the last thing we have to do is put this back on in the little sensor right there and this hose that we took off at the beginning. So when you take the hose that goes from the air intake into the throttle body, uh, you do have to finagle it a little bit. Remember, this has to go towards the back. That is that sensor. So as you're kind of finagling it in there, you do want it to be seated properly. And now that that's back, 
you're gonna reach for that cable, which sometimes is not the easiest to find when you tuck it back. This one had that red clip on it, if you remember. So make sure the clip is back. You're gonna go ahead and reinsert it in. I then push that red tab forward. And then these need to be seated like this and like that. Um, if it's seated up like this, that's not gonna work well. So you seat it how it's supposed to. You take that 5 16 again and you start tightening it down. You do not need to over tighten this, but you do want it snug enough that it's not going to come off. And you can even give it a little test. Again, 5 16 on this one too. As you're turning it, it does get a lot tighter which is what you want. Also, if you haven't changed your air filter in a while, this is a great time to change your air filter. You are right there. Um, it's just a couple of uh, clips away from making that happen. You put this in, perfect. And we're gonna go ahead and start her back up and see if she idles a little bit better. fixed it right there and so it did have a little bit of a hiccup at the beginning which is pretty common because we just put a whole lot of fluid and cleaned a whole lot of junk off inside that throttle body so this is how you do it right there mc fix it please like and subscribe if this video helped you